Hello and welcome. My name is Linda from ITTT. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you are watching for the first time, thanks so much. Welcome. And if you've seen me before on one of our lives, welcome back. <laughs> thanks for joining us again. If you can see me and you can hear me, please let me know in the comments so that I know that everything is working well. And also, please let me know where you're watching from. That's always very interesting for me to know. I am in South Korea, so it's actually Friday morning right now. It's 10 a.m. So I have my morning coffee right here that I might have to uh, take a few sips from here and there. Um, but yeah, where are you watching from? Let me know. I really, I'm really curious to know. And today we are talking about, well, you can actually see right here. How does this work? <laughs> Where is it? Here, here, here. <laughs> uh, it's a live Q&A session today. So you can throw your questions about TEFL, TESOL, teaching English um, to me, and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. Um, so yeah, we have a first time watcher, Sebastian. Hi, watching from Cameroon, first time and it's 2 a.m. Wow, thanks so much for staying up and watching our live. That's awesome. <laughs> Great, so I hope that you guys can hear me and see me. I see there are people, a few people already here. So that's awesome. We are actually streaming live on Facebook and also on YouTube at the same time. So wherever you're watching from, Facebook or YouTube, you can throw your questions at me at any time. Um, and also, if you don't want to miss any of our other lives, because we now actually go live twice a week, please don't forget to like and subscribe. So like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube. Check that out so that you always get notifications when we do get live. So I go live every Friday, my time Friday morning, depending on where you're watching from, it might still be Thursday. Um, that's when I do my live sessions every week. And then my colleague Lisa, she is doing her live sessions every Tuesday. And um, if you have watched our live last Friday, um, then you know that she's actually a non-native English speaking ESL teacher. So if you're also a non-native English speaker, you might want to also check out her lives. It's uh, really interesting, you know, the different perspective, uh, native speaker versus non-native English speaker. And that's actually what our live session was about last week. So that was really cool. I highly recommend you check that out. And um, let me see. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Mohamed. Thanks. Christine from the Philippines. Hi, Christine. <laughs> Rahul watching from Ukraine. Awesome. Okay, from Canada. Nice. And we have Alexander here as well. Alexander, where are you watching from? Could you let me know? That'd be awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so also what I want to mention is before we jump right in, um, there is a special offer at the end of this session where I will be sharing a 30% off discount link. So if you're thinking about taking a TEFL course, um, you might want to wait until the end to get that discount link because 30%, that's the best deal out there, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Hamza. Hope I'm saying that right. Alma from China. Hi, where in China are you watching from? Cool, I lived in China. I love China. It's a great place. <laughs> Hamza watching from Morocco. That's awesome. Hi. Oh, Alexander, great, from Paul West Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, nice, I'm jealous. I bet your weather, the weather over there is nice. Here it's really, really cold. I'm in South Korea. I'm about an hour and a half south of Seoul, and it's getting really, really really cold but no snow yet so i'm waiting for that because white christmas you know would be really nice <laughs> so yeah we have a good group here from all over the world very international i love that that's awesome um what's next so we are doing a uh yeah like i said a teflon tso q a 
So let's have a chat. <laughs> and today I kind of want to do this both ways. So you can throw your questions at me, but I'm also going to ask you guys some questions and I hope you will answer them for me. <laughs> because I'm a very curious person and I want to know more about you guys as well. All right, we have some more people watching from the Philippines. Hi, Rose. And Tiffany, also from the Philippines. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right. Oh, Alexander, you did the 120 hour TEFL course. Awesome. Congratulations on passing that. That's great. That's our most popular course, actually. So. If anyone is interested, if you're sort of new to teaching, you know, then this is definitely the course to get. So I highly recommend that. Then we have Patty from Mexico. Hi. <laughs> and then Maria from Uruguay. Cool. We're really like on all continents today here, pretty much. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. So let me get this settled. Q&A, like I said, 30% off special at the end. I'm going to share the link, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> cool. Oh, by the way, I think I didn't introduce myself. My name is Linda. <laughs> oh, I think I said it at the beginning. But anyway, if you are uh, if you just tuned in, my name is Linda. I'm from IITTT, um, and I live in South Korea. I've been uh, living abroad since... 2012, 2013, that's when my abroad adventure sort of started in China. Um, I taught English there and then I moved to South Korea and I've been here now for five and a half years also teaching and working for ITTT and doing a lot of other stuff. If you're interested, you know, in um, China, South Korea, Asia in general, you can check out uh, Linda Goes East on Instagram or also my website, lindagoeseast.com. Um, then you can check out what I'm personally up to. Um, and you can also email me if you have questions specifically about South Korea. Um, I might also do a live about South Korea in the future because um, that's a very popular destination to teach at. So, oh, cool. Alma is in Xiaoxing. Xiaoxing, sorry. Where, what province is that in? Xiaoxing. Really nice here. Where are where did I live? Yeah, I lived in um, Guangzhou first, and then I lived in Changsha, in Hunan province. So yeah, it was a blast. It was very good. But the food in Hunan is very very spicy, and I can't eat that spicy. So it was uh, it was interesting. <laughs> cool. Mm. Then we have somebody. Yeah, Ja from New Zealand, living in Morocco. Cool, awesome. <laughs> Great, we are almost family. Yeah, we are a Teflon family, for sure. Teflon T-Sol family right here. <laughs> Great, okay. Then I already got a couple of questions. You're very fast, awesome. Let me prepare to answer your questions. Let me see, we have a couple of questions already. Um, <clears throat> Mohammed asked, how much is this course or how many courses do we have? So um, that's also a question that we got in the comments earlier. Somebody asked, what sort of uh, courses do you have? How much are the courses, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a wide, wide, wide variety of courses uh, at ITTT, basically for every different kinds of uh, needs um, you'll find a course for you there. So basically our courses are divided into three different kinds. So we have online, in class and combined. So online is 100% online. The in class course is a four week course at a training center from ITTT. We have like 30 different locations worldwide. So you can check that out on the website, which location you prefer one that's close to you or a lot of people also they take the in-class course in the country where they then plan to teach after so that's also a good idea and then the combined course which combines the two so first you complete an online part and then you complete practical teaching training at a center of your choice for 
between five and ten days. So it depends on which um, <clears throat> it depends on which location you choose. Some training centers do five days, some do ten days, some also do like weekends. So it's very flexible. And then you can get this extra sort of teaching practice. As far as price goes, it really depends on the course. So I highly recommend checking out www.teflcourse.net. Um, and then you can see all, I'm just gonna post that into the comments. For all course options, you can check that out because every course um, is different, different in length, different in uh, content. So um, the prices vary, but the, it starts at 175 um, US dollars and then it goes up until like the in-class courses are like usually 1,400, 500, also depending on the location. The 120 hour course, which is the most popular option, um, is 349 with um, tutor option, with tutor. And then without tutor, it's, let me double check. Two, one second. Um, so we always have uh, courses with tutor, the online courses with tutor or without tutor. So there's always two prices. So the 120 hour course without tutor support is 239 US dollars and with tutor support, 349 US dollars. So, but check that out. Um, here, I'm gonna post another link to um, the online courses specifically, because I think, especially in, you know, nowadays, these days, we prefer online um, and it's just more convenient and um, we try to avoid traveling too much. So I think online is a good option. Um, okay, then we have another question from Maria. I did the 120 hour TESOL course. Is it valid everywhere? Yes, our courses are accredited and worldwide recognized. So it does depend, however, on, you know, the location where you want to teach because some countries, they have their own requirements depending on, you know, certain things like uh, your nationality or your teaching experience, your age, things like that. So it depends on where you want to teach that you need to look into the requirements specifically for that place or online platform, because they all have different requirements. But yes, our all our courses are recognized worldwide and accredited worldwide. And so yes, it is valid everywhere. And most employers around the world, we work with many, many different schools and recruiters and stuff like that. And they do recognize the ITTT brand. And so they know, you know, what we stand for and the quality of our courses and stuff like that. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we the a lot of recruiters and schools that we work with, they also specifically only hire ITTT grants. A lot of them because they um, like our courses, they appreciate them, they know the value, they know the content, and they think that this, you know, aligns with their um, company and their schools. So they hire ITTD grads. So yeah, <laughs> they are valid everywhere. Okay, let me see. Hamza. I want to inquire concerning the duration of the 120 hour TEFL online course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that course, you have up to six months to complete it. And when you sign up and then you pay your course fee, you get your login details and then you can log in immediately and start working through the units. There are 20 units in this course. And like I said, you have six months to complete them. You can study at your own pace and at your own you know, preference whenever you like, whenever it suits you. So it's great for people who are working, who are working full time, who don't have that much time. They can study a little bit less every week. Um, and it also fits people who have a lot of time and you know, are able to study every day. So <clears throat> it's really flexible and really a great course to take. 
Um, there are no set times where you need to be online. So it's really flexible. Most people complete this course in two or three months. Um, we also have some uh, really uh, eager students to complete it faster in like a month or so if they, you know, really want to get their certificate fast or they need to get it fast or they just really enjoy the course and they want to study quickly, depending on, you know, their learning style, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. So all different kinds of uh, durations here for this course, but typically like two or three months, I would say. Me too, I completed in, in like, three months, I think, three or four months. I was working at the time, so I completed like a few units per week, and then maybe I didn't do anything for a week. So it's all up to you and how much time you have and your own preference. And then another question from Hamza. So how much does the 120 hour TEFL online course cost? So um, I don't know, maybe you tuned in a little bit late. I mentioned that or maybe because there is a sort of delay with the live on Facebook, but um, I'm just gonna repeat it real quick. So this particular course, it comes with two options. So with tutor support or without tutor support, with tutor support, where you can ask your, you have like a tutor that you can ask questions all the time. If you have, you know, want to know more about something or you're like stuck on something, you don't understand something, you can um, contact that tutor. And the tutored option is 349 US dollars. And the um, untutored option is 239 US dollars for this course. <laughs> okay. Great, then we have a question from Christine. I'm taking the 120 hour TESOL course at the moment. Is it possible for me to teach in South Korea too? I'm a non-native English speaker. May I also know what are the requirements? Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, South Korea is a great place to teach in. Um, I've been here, like I said, for five and a half years. There's always so, so many great opportunities. So it's definitely a great place to teach. The only thing about South Korea, um, so to get the teacher visa, that's the E2 visa, you need to be from an, what they consider an English speaking country. And they consider an English speaking country to be Canada, US, uh, Ireland, UK, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. That's what they consider native English speaking countries. So if you are, if you have a passport from one of these countries, you can apply for the E2 visa. Um, you do need to have a job lined up before you do that. So your employer will help you with that visa process. So South Korean schools, they do hire in advance. So you can find jobs online and apply and then uh, do Skype interviews and stuff and then get your paperwork and file for the visa, et cetera. Um, so that's the most common way to get to South Korea. However, there are also other visa types that also um, allow you to live and work in South Korea. Um, I'm not a visa expert. So I'm not, you know, 100% sure which uh, visas there are and how many there are, but um, I would look into that if you, if I were you, so you could um, maybe contact the Korean embassy in your country and check that out um, and ask them exactly maybe for your particular case, what options you have. I'm, for example, uh, my visa is a spousal visa in South Korea. My husband is Korean, he's from here. And under that visa, you can also live and work in Korea. And there's uh, different kinds of long-term visas in Korea, and you might qualify for one. And then it also allows you to work here because people who already have such a visa, they do get hired into schools and in teaching positions, even if they're not from one of those seven countries that I mentioned. So yeah, I recommend trying that out and contacting the embassy because every case can be different. Okay. There is something from Ernest. I already have IELTS score, but I still want to have a TESOL, a TEFL certificate from Mongolia. 
Nice. I really want to go to Mongolia. It's so high up on my list. It looks beautiful. I really want to go. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I think, and that's something that my colleague Lisa uh, mentioned last week during our live when we were talking about differences between native English speaker and non-native English speaker. Um, she definitely mentioned that if you are a non-native English speaking teacher, having a English uh, language certificate like an IELTS or a, uh, um, what else is there? A uh, TOEIC or something like that, that definitely helps, especially the IELTS. She also did the IELTS and she's preparing to do another one, another certificate. Um, so that's definitely good to have as a non-native English speaking teacher. And definitely also a TEFL or TESOL certificate, definitely, because there are many, many countries where they require their teachers to have a TEFL. Otherwise, you can't even you can't even get a visa there. So definitely. And also because, uh, you know, for non-native English speaking teachers, the more qualifications and additional certifications you have, the higher are your chances to sort of stand out from other applicants. So definitely recommend it. <laughs> cool. And then Maria asks, can you recommend a place where to go so we can find different options of hiring around the world? Sure. So if you are a ITTT course graduate, you actually have access to our lifetime job support. So you get access to a lot of resources, a lot of unadvertised jobs that you can only find through ITTT. So that's one great way. And if you are an ITTT grad, you can reach out to us via email and we will, you know, send you the info. Um, we also have an open job section on our website where you can browse for jobs. Let me find that real quick for you and then I can drop the link. Uh, yeah, right here, one second. Okay, dropping the link now. <laughs> and um, that's one way. Also, we advertise jobs on our Facebook page. So that's why I say always like and subscribe so that you do see those updates. We post a lot on our Facebook page, you know, um, not only sales stuff and um, yeah, stuff like that, but also helpful, mostly helpful resources, you know, uh, teaching aids, teaching uh, material or jobs as well. So um, definitely check that out. It's a great page, you know, for teachers. Even if you have not taken a course yet, I highly recommend, you know, liking our page and checking it out. So that's a great way. And then you can also check out, um, you know, online resources. It always depends on where you want to, where you want to teach. So there's different sites for different countries, but um, we can also give you more information about that. Um, but even like a quick search, like teaching jobs, China or something, you can definitely find a lot of positions there, postings. Okay. <laughs> Next is uh, C. Katrin, Kat Katrine, sorry <laughs> if I'm saying that wrong. Um, I've got a CELTA certificate. So which course could be next for me? Great. So since you already have a CELTA, I would recommend a um, diploma course. So we have a TESOL diploma course. That's sort of a very advanced high level course that people take who want to teach, you know, for the long term. Um, we're teaching yeah, for a long time and plan on getting sort of higher level positions in the TEFL, TESOL industry, and also maybe specialization, TEFL specializations. So we have specializations for teaching business English, for teaching young learners, and for teaching online. So those are three separate um, specialization courses that you can take that also add to your professional portfolio. So those are the things that I would recommend to you. Um, Okay. All right. Then Ja or Ya, yeah, sorry if I'm saying this wrong, uh, says, this is all new to me. Never done a course like this. Is this course to teach children to adults? 
So yeah, if you just heard about the specializations, so those we have specializations where you can take that you can take specifically for teaching young learners or teaching business English to adults, stuff like that. The basic 120 hour course, the standard TEFL certification is sort of, yeah, like a basic standard course. So it covers both teaching children, adults, all age ranges. So if you're just starting out, if you're completely new to this, like you are, um, this is the course to check out. So the 120 hour course. And we also have course bundles or packages. So for example, the uh, master package is um, the 120 hour course plus the specializations in young learners and business English. So this would cover everything. This covers the basic certification and teaching children and teaching adults. So that's also a great course to get if you're new. Recommended. Okay, then we have Minu Minu. We <laughs> hope I'm saying that right. Uh, apologies if you've already answered this question. Would this course help me to teach in Italy? So I actually haven't answered this spe uh, specific question. But Italy, but um, yeah. So like I mentioned earlier, our courses are all recognized worldwide and internationally accredited. So they are valid in Italy. And it is always going to depend on your personal, uh, you know, skill set, your background, your nationality. Um, but I would say yes, that you can definitely teach English in Italy. Uh, Europe is a little bit more difficult to get into because of, uh, you know, EU uh, laws and their like immigration policies and stuff like that. So um, it can be a little bit more difficult for non-EU citizens to go there, but it's not impossible. There are programs that place you um, to Italy to teach. Um, and you can also actually, there's sort of like a workaround where you can apply for a... Um, Italian language course and then you get sort of like a student visa which also allows you to work so that's what a lot of people do they apply for this course and then get their visa and then go to Italy and also teach there so while also taking the language course so that's maybe an option that's interesting for you and we actually have more about this um about Italy and all other countries in our FAQ section. So I'm going to post the link into the comment box right now. It's basically tefelcoursenet slash FAQ. Or is it FAQs? FAQ. FAQ. And then um, there are questions about that with Italy and how to get that visa so you can go to Italy and stuff. So check that out. I recommend that. But definitely, this course will definitely help you. <laughs> All right, then a question from Sebastian. I am a native English speaker and I have one year experience teaching English in Cameroon. I'm interested in teaching English online. Any recommendations and requirements? Okay, cool. So I would recommend first, if you don't have a TEFL or TESOL certif certificate yet, get certified. Um, take the course and then since you're interested in teaching English online, I would also recommend our specialization course for teaching English online. Um, you can find it on our website, teflcourse.net. So that would be the 120 hour course that I would recommend for you, plus 50 hour specialization in teaching English online. Um, about the requirements, it's always going to depend on the platform that you want to teach at or, or work for. Um, it's easiest to sort of work for a platform and there's so, so many te English teaching platforms out there. They all have different requirements. There are some that only hire, for example, British people because they want a British accent. There's some platforms that only hire North Americans because they want an American accent. But then there's platforms that don't really care that much about accent or where you're from. It matters more about, you know, your skills. So there's platforms like that. So there's they all kind of um, it varies from platform to platform. So 
We do also in our FAQ section, the link that I just posted, have a lot of information about the different teaching platforms that there are so that you can check out and you know do some research and find the one that suits your needs and fits your profile. Um, so that would be my recommendation for you. <laughs> Start with um, the TEFL course. And then, like I mentioned earlier, all ITTT grads, they have um, access to lifetime job support. So definitely check that out. All right, then Ja, Ja, Ya, Bo. <laughs> I really don't know how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm looking at Kuwait to teach. I've heard it is good there if you're qualified. Do you know if this course is okay for teaching there? Yeah, so actually the Middle East is the highest uh, paying region when it comes to TEFL teaching or teaching English abroad. So they have the highest salaries. I don't know specifically about Kuwait, but it's also in this region. So I, I think they also have very, very high salaries. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, many countries in that area also pay tax-free salaries. So that's really, really awesome. They also offer a lot of benefits to their teachers, like um, paid airfare. Um, <clears throat> I think I need a sip for my coffee. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, okay. So paid airfare, uh, visa support, obviously, bonuses, um, you know, vac paid vacations, all that kind of stuff, paid housing. That's So that's a really good region to work in. And yes, this course is good for teaching there. It is recognized worldwide. We have many people who have taken the course and then moved to the Middle East to teach English there. So definitely, I recommend it. <laughs> okay, now I think I wanna ask you guys some questions. I prepared a couple of questions. Um, let me see what I wanna ask you. All right, first off, why are you interested in teaching English? That's what I really want to know. Why are you interested in teaching English? Because there's so many reasons why people want to teach English abroad. And, um, you know, for me, it was mostly because in school, I was always like, um, I was really interested in foreign languages. So I studied a couple of foreign languages and um, <clears throat> I studied Chinese and then, I was like, oh, I really want to go to China. And so teaching English is kind of um, a great way to go and like experience China and also improve my Chinese skills by living there, explore the country and the culture. And so that's sort of how I got into teaching English. But why are you interested in teaching English? I really, really interested to know. So please let me know. <laughs> okay. We have an answer, Nesman99. It's a good way to start a new life and travel the world. Yes. Yeah, definitely. That's a great reason. And I think that's probably maybe the biggest reason why most people do um, teach English abroad, because it is a great way to travel the world. Um, like now, I was born and raised in Germany. So um, Asia and you know, those places always seem super far away. But now, you know, living in Korea, all those like amazing Asian destinations are very close and you get to travel places that, you know, would actually be super far away and then super expensive to travel to from your home country. So that's definitely also something that I enjoy. And definitely starting a new life. So living abroad, teaching English abroad, definitely it changes you. You know, you make so many different new experiences, meet so many new people. You definitely, I know it's cliche and that's what they always say, but like, you're not the same when you come back. It's its true, you know, it's true. All right, then we have Luciana who says, I love teaching English because I'm free. Is that free? So you, what do you mean by that? You're not married, you don't have kids. So you're like, you're free to travel, you're free to do, or it makes you feel you like the freedom. That's also definitely true. So yeah, traveling to new countries, you know, especially if you go like by yourself, it's a huge feeling of freedom. Um, yeah, definitely. I love that too. Cool. 
Anybody else? Don't be shy. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. Why are you interested in teaching English? <laughs> okay. My partner and I want to stay in Kuwait with his sister, and she suggested I teach English there. I love Kuwait and would love the long-term experience. Awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, if you're, like, set on a country that you want to go to, like, for me, it was China. For you, it's Kuwait. Then, yeah, teaching English can be a great way to go there. Awesome. When we teach English, I think that will better my work. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of people that do go abroad, teach English for a year or two or, you know, a couple of years and then go back. And it's definitely a benefit and an asset on your resume. I definitely agree with that. Ramses says, I love languages and I enjoy being in front of a group. Don't mind in front of a camera. Cool. Yeah. So then teaching sounds like works for you. <laughs> Which languages are you interested in? Okay, my name is actually J Jamila. Is it Jamila? Ja for short. Okay, thanks for clarifying. I don't want to butcher your name. So, <laughs> Jamila. Cool, I like that name. It's pretty. Renata, I'm an English teacher for 10 years. I have just started 220 hour TEFL. I love English and I want to travel the world. Awesome. Yeah, traveling the world with a TEFL is a great way. Okay, then another question I have for you. Would you rather teach English abroad or online? I think many people already answered traveling, so I think most people prefer teaching abroad. Oh, and also why? So if you're like, oh, I prefer teaching abroad, why? And oh, I prefer teaching English online, why? Let me know. <laughs> Let me know, would you rather teach English abroad or online? So I haven't really taught online yet. I am thinking about it, especially now these days because the demand is so high. But um, I think I do prefer like teaching English abroad or like face to face to people. Um, it's just a different kind of experience, I think. I like the personal contact <laughs> you know being in front of actual people but um i also do like the benefits that teaching english online has so i'm curious to know what you guys think i'm still waiting for somebody to answer you're all shy <laughs> don't be shy you all have opinions let me know Abroad. Okay, somebody answered. Thank you. Abroad. Why? Why? Let me know why. <laughs> Juliana, I prefer to teach English online. Okay, why? Why? Because <laughs> it's so convenient? <clears throat> Michael, also online. Okay, awesome. Great. Why though? Nobody's answering why. <laughs> Okay, Irma, I prefer teaching abroad. It's like hitting two birds in one stone, working while traveling. Yeah, definitely. Meeting new people and experiencing a new culture. I love it. Yes, I 100% agree with Irma, for sure. For sure. Luciana, uh, I prefer teaching English abroad because we have contact with the students, but I learned a lot in online classes with technology. Yeah, so right, both things kind of have pros and cons. So yeah, I agree with that. Renata, abroad and online. Yeah, you can definitely mix those two. You can, I mean, you can teach abroad, right? And then also like online on the side. A lot of my friends are actually doing that, um, especially nowadays. They sort of also top up their salaries. You know, they are full-time teachers in the classroom and then also teach English online on the side. So that's also really great. Um, Nesman, you said abroad, right? Yes, abroad and why? You get to see different cultures and explore different traditions. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, especially the traditions. It's really, really interesting. 
um, especially if you really live abroad, you know, and then you get to experience the different traditions, different holidays from like a local perspective and you get to celebrate with them. That's really, really great. Um, there's so many interesting traditions out there and, um, yeah, that's really cool. Okay, Jamila, abroad only because I want to be in Kuwait and personal contact. Yeah, awesome. If you move to Kuwait or when you move to Kuwait, I definitely want to come and visit. <laughs> uh, I hear also only good things about that uh, region, Kuwait, and I really want to go there. Alexander, I want to teach because I value other cultures and come from a Spanish-English background. I'm lucky to speak two languages and love to help others. Yeah, that's also great. If you love helping others, then teaching uh, English or teaching in general is definitely a great uh, career choice. You will feel a lot of fulfillment um, in your in your um, daily job. Awesome. All right, let me ask you one more question because a lot of people want to go abroad. Which country would you like to teach English in? If you could just pick one and there would be no no strings attached, no requirements, no like nothing. And here, here's the plane ticket. Just go and teach there. Which country would it be? Which country would it be? I know for Jamila, it would be Kuwait, right? <laughs> I know that. What about the others? What's your dream country to teach English in? Oh, and this is a uh, answer to the previous question. Ruth says, I prefer teaching abroad because I can meet new people, improve um, the L2, so the, con the language of the country that you're in, um, and know about their culture. Yeah, awesome, great. Okay, so which country would you like to teach English in? Oh, and also why, please add why. <laughs> <clears throat> Maria says, I would love to teach English in, or teach in India. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would love that too. I mean, India looks just amazing. So colorful, full of traditions, culture. Um, it's also a huge country. So also a lot of mixed cultures. And yeah, sounds really amazing or looks amazing. I want to go too. <clears throat> Juliana says, actually, I would like to go to Japan and South Korea because my friends live there. Nice. Are your friends also teaching English in Japan and Korea? That's awesome. Or do you have local friends? Nice. Yeah, Japan and South Korea are always very popular um, destinations for sure. And they also do offer, you know, programs. So Japan has the JET program that places teachers into schools there. South Korea has the EPIC program, and there's also another program called TALK program. Um, so they're very established when it comes to like teaching programs. The salaries are also good. South Korea also has a lot of benefits like paid housing. Um, <clears throat> you also are part of the national pension scheme. So you do pay into the pension scheme. It goes from you, like, they take a cut of your salary. But then when you leave Korea, you get all of that back because you're not staying. So you get all of that money back. So that's also really good. And great health care also. Um, Luciana, I would like to go to England to improve my English, but teach English in my country. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you want to go to England like for a couple of years improve your English and your skills, and then go back to your country and teach English. That's also what a lot of people do, for sure. That's awesome. Renata, any part of Europe or Asia? Yeah, cool. <laughs> awesome. Alexander, I want to teach in Europe, mostly Spain, since I speak Spanish already. Yeah, cool. Spain is actually very popular. Very, very popular destination in Europe. And they also have, depending on, you know, your um, <clears throat> uh, passport situation, because they, like I said earlier, Europe is always a bit um, difficult to get into for non-EU citizens. But Spain is also one of those places that have actually a um, 
teaching program, the cultural ambassadors program um, that might be interesting to you. And also, they also do that visa, like in Italy, where you sign up for a language course. But I guess you don't need a language course. But if you sign up for a Spanish language course, you get like the student visa, which also allows you to teach or work certain amount of hours. So a lot of people also do that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Nesman 99, Brazil, South America, Philippines, the cultures are exciting. Carnival, etc., and inexpensive. That is so true, yeah. Brazil, South America. Mm -hmm. South America is also very popular when it comes to um, teaching. However, the salaries are not that high in the region, but also it's cheap to live there. And um, obviously, if you know, you always have to think about what do you care about more? Do you care about more about your uh, salary, the money you make, or about uh, the location you're in and the kind of experiences you can make there, right? In terms of culture and um, traditions and all that stuff that you experience. So it's always, you know, that's why there's so many different options for everybody's preferences. <laughs> Great, okay. Irma, I want to teach in Thailand. Really, I've been researching, reading blogs, and joining groups about teaching in Thailand this past few days. Cool. Thailand is also a really, really big market for teaching English, certainly. Some of my colleagues from ITTT, they have taught in Thailand, and they love it. Some are still there, so um, it's definitely a great place to be as a teacher. And our FAQ section also has a lot of resources, so I highly recommend checking that out. All right, and Nesman says, anywhere but the USA, it's time to venture out. Yeah, definitely, that's a great mindset. So for sure, if you're from the US or anywhere really, um, you know, if you wanna go to a place that's just different um, than your own country, that's great. Maria asks, what about South Africa? Is it difficult to find a job there? So like with South Africa, you can definitely find teaching positions there. We do have a TEFL center in South Africa and we do get uh, teaching job, job postings, job postings for South Africa um, quite a lot. Um, so I would definitely say that it is possible. It is possible for sure. You might have to, you know, whenever you are like set on like a specific location, obviously it might take more time to find a job. Whereas if you're like, oh, I just want to teach in Asia, but you're open to like 10 different countries, then there's obviously going to be more um, opportunities. Um, but definitely not impossible. Okay. Uh, then we have, let me see. Um, all right, this question, one more question I have for you guys. Do you want to teach English short term or long term? So do you just want to teach English for a few years and then either go back home or, you know, do something different? Or are you looking for a more long term career when it comes to teaching English? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. All right. While you're thinking about that and while you're answering, I'm going to answer one more question from NAR. My dream is to teach in South Korea, but I'm from India. Any help on how to get there? I actually had a similar question earlier about um, a girl from the Philippines asked that same question. So um, basically for Korea, you need to be from uh, uh, either to get the teaching visa, you need to be either from uh, America, Canada, UK, Ireland, Australia, South Africa, or New Zealand to get the teaching visa, but there's also other visa types that you might be eligible for that also allow you to live and work in Korea. 
Um, so I recommend reaching out to the Korean embassy in your country and check out those options because it always depends on your background. And so it's really hard to say for me, you know, because I don't know you, but I recommend it's not impossible. And um, yeah, reach out to your embassy. Okay, so do you want to teach English short term or long term? All right, Maria says short term for sure. I'm 50 already, don't have much time. <laughs> oh, 50 is not old, come on. <laughs> we actually have a lot of older people who do take our TEFL courses and move abroad and they love it. <laughs> Short term for sure, yeah. But maybe you wanna experience a little bit and go back to your country and be with your family. So then I definitely understand that. Luciana, I want to teach English for long term. Okay, nice, great. Maria says, are there any jobs for less than a year? Um, yeah, so most teaching contracts are for a year. Um, and actually a year goes by super fast. So, you know, I, but if you want less than a year, there are positions like that, but it might be a little bit harder to find depending on the location. But um, then maybe you could also do like some volunteering. There's a lot of volunteer opportunities that are like three months, even one month or like four, five, six months, really up to you when it comes to volunteering. So that might also be something that's interesting. Obviously it might not be paid then, but um, usually jobs are like contracts are for a year. Nadine says, long term for sure, but also thinking of doing language study wherever I end up teaching it. Yeah, cool. For sure, that's also a great opportunity, you know, if you teach English abroad in a different country to do language courses there, to learn the language of the country that you're in, that's just a great opportunity for sure, because you're surrounded by that language every day. So it's a lot easier to learn than if you're in your own country or in only surrounded by English, for sure. Tadashi says short term, okay. A lot of short term, okay. Uh, Alita says, is it easier to get a, te a job teaching younger kids or teaching adults? I think this is going to depend on where you want to teach. So for example, in Asia, um, a lot of teaching jobs are teaching children because that's kind of how um, English education, like the system works here. Uh, there's just a lot of focus on teaching children. A lot of teachers, you know, work for kindergartens or elementary, middle school, high school uh, in Asia. But for example, in Latin America or Mexico, it's a lot more companies and like business English. So that would be adults. Not to say that you can't find adult teaching jobs also in Asia, definitely, but it's just kind of more. So um, it's going to depend on the location where you want to go to. Irma says, haven't decided if it is for long term or short term yet. Maybe the actual interaction and the experience can help me decide. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'm just going to teach English for a year and then go back home. And then um, they never leave and they end up staying for 10 years. <laughs> so that can also happen. Or people are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I really want to go to wherever, Korea. And then I want to live there for a long time because I like BTS or whatever. <laughs> I like K-pop. And then they get here, they teach for a year. And then they're like, oh, you know what? I don't really like Korea. Let me move, you know, to another place. So definitely. You know, you need to experience it first to know if it suits you, you know, if you like it or not. It's very different than uh, what you see on the internet or, you know, on the TV. So that's always a good idea. Okay, great. Then we actually, I had some questions in the comments um, from our Facebook page. I just want to go over. One was like, what sort of courses does IITTT offer? So I mentioned that actually before, we offer a wide variety of courses, online, in-class combined. They range from 50 hours all the way to 550 hours of study. So it depends on 
you know, what your goal is and what you want to do. Um, then another question was, in which countries can I teach after completing the ITTT course or ITTT TEFL or TESOL course? Like I said, they are accredited worldwide and recognized worldwide. So you can teach anywhere you want, but it is going to depend on your personal portfolio, your background, because different countries have different regulations. And um, so always do your research, you know, on the country you want to go to what their requirements are so that you know uh, what you need to do in order to get there. Another question was, how fast after the course can I find a job and how long does it take to complete the course? I already actually answered that. So it depends on what course you're taking, but if it's the standard 120 hour course, you have up to six months to complete it. And it's going to, most people just need like two or three months to complete it depending on, you know, how much time you have to study. And then as soon as you basically, you can actually start applying for jobs what, as soon as you have started course, basically, and tell them, yeah, I'm doing the course right now. Or you can apply as soon as you complete and you have your certificate. So you don't have to wait at all. And the last one from our Facebook comments, the questions is, what are the requirements and documents needed to teach abroad? So this also always depends on where you want to teach. Like I said a few times now, every country has different requirements and they require different documents. But usually it's a TEFL certificate. It's a passport, obviously, because you need to leave the country, a valid passport. So make sure you, your passport you know, still has time on it. Um, at least like a year, if you're planning to go for a year, it needs to be at least valid for another year. Um, some countries also require a criminal background check. And um, some countries need like uh, certain kinds of like apostille, apostille stamps on your documents. Um, but like I said, it depends on where you want to work and what their requirements are. But uh, make sure you do your research before you kind of start the process um, so that you know what documents you need. And because, you know, with the government, it always takes time to get certain documents, especially these days when uh, they're not working or they can't work how they, you know, worked normally. They have different hours and stuff. So it's recommended to sort of start with the whole process one year before you want to go abroad so that you know exactly what you need to do and you have time to prepare everything. Yep. All right, let me look at the comments again and let me get more coffee. All right, Elena says, can you get a job teaching English to non-English speakers while living in the UK or Australia or US? Though most people who live there are English speaking. Yeah, you can actually find jobs there because they have a lot of immigrants, right? And refugees who need um, English language training. So I actually have a friend who is a teacher in the US for um, children of whose parents aren't from or whose parents don't speak English as a native language. And so she's uh, teaching those children. So you can definitely find positions like that for sure, especially in the UK and Australia and US where there's so many different you know, people from everywhere. Um, it's definitely, you can definitely find a job teaching English. Okay, Ahmad says, how can I become a part of this course and what is the fee? Okay, I already answered that, but um, you can just apply, you know, you need to be a fluent English speaker and at least 18 years old, but that's it. You can go to teflcourse.net and check out, uh, you know, all the different course options. They all have different prices. Um, so check that out. Depends on the course and then you can just apply and you can start learning. All right, another one from Elida. Where can you find job postings for ESL teacher jobs? Also, is there an age limit? I'm 18 and I'm going to college, but I'm interested in doing this after I graduate from school. 
actually a lot of people do um you know teach english abroad after they graduate so that's great and it's great that you're you know so early in thinking about this it's really really awesome so you really have a lot of time to get all the things you need and do a lot of research so i commend you for that um if you decide to take a course from ittt there is lifetime job support so all ittt course graduates have access to unadvertised jobs jobs that our partners share only with us and um, as long as you want to teach so even if you're not teaching right away if you're like waiting a few years and then you're going um, back to teaching you can uh, hit us up and say like hey can you help me i'm an ittt grad um, i'm looking for jobs um, with job postings it also depends on where you want to teach so maybe you you're not sure yet where is the best place for you um, I highly recommend, you know, checking out blogs, checking out our TEFL blog. We have a blog, teflcourse.net slash blog, and also teflcourse.net slash FAQ. You'll find a lot of information about the different countries, um, the salaries, the cost of living, the requirements, different documents you need to go to those countries. You'll find all of that there. And then you can slowly make up your mind where you want to teach and then, uh, figure it out age limit uh, so you for the TEFL course you need to be at least 18 and um, also when it comes to teaching there is only sometimes an upper age limit where because of local like retirement age you can't teach if you're over 60 but it doesn't obviously apply in your case so good luck with everything <laughs> Okay, Irma, the discussion boosts my desire to teach abroad. May 2021, let me do what I want. Yeah, I think we're all hoping for that. We're all hoping for that. May 2020, let us do what we want and go where we want. I'm hoping for that as well. <laughs> Too many days spent at home, right, this year. So let's pray that 2021 will be better. I'm positive it will be. I'm positive. Always stay positive. But 2020 was a great year to, you know, get ready for 2021. So a lot of people actually took TEFL courses in 2020 because, or especially online courses, because they want to be ready for 2021. So awesome. Thank you so much for joining today. It was really great. And now is the time where I am sharing our 30% discount link. I think a lot of people have been waiting for that. They're like, Linda, where is the link? Stop talking. Share the link with us. <laughs> okay. I'm posting it right now. It should show up. It's an apply link. So when you click on this link, it'll send you straight to the application form. Um, and then when you fill out your application, you will see the discounted price um, sort of behind the course that you're choosing. So watch out for that. Uh, you need to apply through this link to get the discount. And also the application is totally uh, free. So there is nothing else. You can fill out the application and see, you know, how it works. And then you can fill out another application. So um, no pressure there, but you need to apply through this link to get the discount. So definitely do that. And then also how to find us online here, <laughs> where you're watching from. So some people are watching from YouTube. Some people are watching from Facebook, but you can also find us here on Twitter and also on Instagram. And this is our website, teflcourse.net. And like I said, check out the FAQ section. Check out um, the different online courses. And then uh, Luciana asks, when will be the next live? So my live sessions are always Friday at this time, 10 a.m. Korea time. So about this time, wherever you are. And then my colleague, Lisa, she goes live Tuesdays. 
uh, and she's a non-native English speaking teacher. She's awesome. She has a lot of experience teaching in China, teaching online, and she knows a lot of good stuff about what you need or how to get a job when you're a non-native English speaker. Um, so please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you get the notifications when we go live. I recommend that. Um, also, what else? Oh, if you want to listen to uh, our live sessions as a podcast, we do have like six or seven live sessions already recorded. You can always rewatch them. Also, if you didn't catch this one from the beginning, you can rewatch it uh, after on YouTube or on Facebook. And we also turn these episodes or live sessions into podcast episodes. Let me also share the link. You can find it on iTunes, on Google Podcasts, on Spotify. If you search for ITTT, it's called the Tefl and Tesol uh, blog. Tef no, not blog. Tefl and Tesol podcast by ITTT. <laughs> so you can find it there and then download the episodes and then just listen to them. Um, some people do prefer that, but you can also watch the live sessions. Um, there's a folder uh, on both on Facebook, on our page, where it's just live sessions or live events and on YouTube as well, or the lives are in one spot. So you can check it out, you know, pick the title that you think interests you the most. And please, please, please join me again next week. It'd be really, really nice. Uh, I think we have a really good group here. Our Tefl family, who said that earlier, we are a family. <laughs> I love that. Can't find it now. Anyway, oh here, we're almost we're almost family. We are. We are a Tefl and Tiso family. And please join me again. And even after this live, if you have more questions, just write it into the comments and I'll get back to you. And again, don't forget to check out the 30% off link. I'm just going to share it one more time in case somebody missed it. Because uh, that's really the best deal you can get. 30% off. Only you guys. Only our Tefl family today. So don't miss it. And thanks so much for joining me today. It was great. I think I'm losing my voice soon. So I better sign off and drink some more hot coffee or tea. And um, yeah, this was fun. Please join again every Friday and Tuesday, whenever you have time, we would love it. And um, we'll be here answering your question. So, all right, I think I'm signing off now. Uh, have a wonderful day or evening or afternoon or night, wherever you are, and um, I appreciate it. And yeah, you know, if you're interested in Teflon and TESOL, um, just do it. You know, it's a great way to start uh, a new life, a different career, you know, and get amazing experiences. So don't hesitate. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, too. And also take care. <laughs> Thanks. Join me again, please. Bye. Bye-bye.